I'm Michael Landon, and I've got a secret. From Hollywood, the show that reveals all, I've Got a Secret. And now, let's meet the star of I've Got a Secret, Steve Allen. Good evening. Welcome to I've Got a, uh, what is it here? Oh, yeah, Secret. I keep forgetting. Tonight's panelists are whoo, comedy star Pat Carroll, our resident philosopher and wit, Henry Morgan, lovely Broadway and TV star Anita Gillette, and our English master of japes and jests, Mr. Richard Dawson. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now let's meet this evening's first contestants. Panel, these uh, lovely ladies have a secret that they share. It's an honor that they've all received. Would you tell us your name, please? Nancy Johnson. And where are you from, Ms. Johnson? From San Francisco. And your name? Uh, Rosemary Copeland from Sherman Oaks. Rosemary Copeland. And this lady's named? Ruth Shawwell from Broomwell, Pennsylvania. All right. Now, Mrs. Johnson, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll let the audience know what it is. Uh-huh. Very good. And Mrs. Copeland? Uh-huh. And Mrs. Shaw. All right. <laughs> I repeat, panel, these ladies have a secret. They share an honor they received, and we'll start the questioning with Anita. Okay. Uh, may I call you Nancy, Rosemary, and Ruth? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rosemary. Yes. Was this honor something to do with your beauty? All three of you are such lovely ladies. I wondered it. Uh, I think so. Yes. It has something to do with the way you look. Uh, was it indeed some kind of a beauty contest you you all three won uh, in different yes. areas? Uh, hmm. Was it? Um, um, golly. It was a beautiful <laughs> now. I stuck. Oh, good. There was the you buzzer. Covered very good ground. Anita Richard. You're not related, ladies, in any way at all, are you? No, no we're not. No, all right. Was the uh, award that you were given a contest that's held annually in America? Yes. Yes. Is it held locally? No. Mm. Sometimes, yeah. perhaps. It is? In Would it be way, like a grandmother of the year award? Although I'm not saying any of you could be a grandmother. One I know is. two of you are grandfathers, but I don't want to. Ask. So, uh, would it would it be that type of an award or a national award we would recognize? More a national, I would say. I would think so. Would be a form <laughs> of making a buzzing noise. <laughs> oh, very close to that, Pat Carroll. Would it have anything to do with uh, the fact of motherhood? No, no, it doesn't. No. Uh, was it some kind of an achievement in the arts and sciences? No. no. Uh, was it some kind of local uh, or, or national uh, civic type of thing that you did? No, no. Perhaps, perhaps if we return to the original... Oh, well, it was beauty. Yeah. yeah. But beauty was the only reasons for its being. Not no. the only, no. You went naked on those beauty passion <laughs> things, did you? Henry Morgan is so often is the case. It's up to you. <laughs> I was wondering... Wait, you, you're in, uh, I have to say this very cautiously, but you are apparently in different age groups. Mm -hmm. Your eyes do not deceive you. <laughs> I would say, you know, from 18 to 24, uh, something like Rob, that. You're right, you're right. 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 <laughs> now, did you, do you each have a title? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Is it most beautiful blank, and I'm looking for that word. No, it isn't. Not specifically in that way, no. It's you were so close to mother, it. The secret is that each was a Miss America. Oh. Oh. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're going to go over here to the uh, center of our stage now and show you how each of these ladies looked. Uh, this is... Uh, the first, of course, here, Mrs. Johnson's maiden name was Nancy Fleming. She was the winner in 1961. And here she is when she was crowned. 
And uh, Mrs. Copeland, uh, then known as actress uh, Rosemary LaPlanche, was the 1941 winner panel. There you see both sides of the story. And Mrs. Schauble, who was then Miss uh, Ruth Malcolmson, was the winner in 1924. You know, the first thing that strikes me, Richard, you're much prettier today. <laughs> you are. You're Very pretty tall. indeed. Yeah. You play along? <laughs> <laughs> now, cut that out, Richard. Oh. Mrs. Johnson, how did uh, winning the title uh, affect the rest of your life? Well, I think it's a little difficult to know what your life would have been at 18, which is when I won the title. But what I did do as a result of having won Miss America was use the $10,000 scholarship at Michigan State. Uh, I have since married, have two children, live in San Francisco, have done uh, both school teaching and television work. Good for you. Very fine story indeed. Mrs. Copeland? Well, being 1941, that was the war year, so I traveled the entire year and uh, played army camps. And then I had a very lovely career in pictures and television where I met my husband, Harry Copeland. And we have two children, 19 and 22. And uh, now I've become a professional artist. Good for you. Another very interesting story. <laughs> Mrs. Schauble, you won, as we've already explained, in 1924. Uh, when was the first uh, Miss America contest? 1921. I was the third one. <laughs> I guess in those days, they didn't give away all the fabulous prizes that today's winners get, huh? No. No money. Many trophies and cups and golden mermaid. <laughs> or as we would say today, big deal, right? <laughs> but the honor was indeed great indeed. Uh, your husband, I understand, was in the audience uh, when you uh, were named Miss America, but you didn't meet him then. What was that story? No, well, I uh, met him about five years later, and uh, I knew him for nine days when we were engaged. Mm -hmm. And we've been married 42 years now. He's the vice president of a college. I have a son and three grandchildren. Well, good for you. 15, 11, and 7. Well, thank you all for being our guests. You've certainly done more than your part in keeping America beautiful. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. I've got a secret. We'll continue in just one minute. You're having breakfast with the stars on Game Show Network. Stay tuned. Now we're going to get another contestant out here. Could you tell the panel your name, please? Carla Christensen from San Anselmo, California. San Anselmo. A panel, this young lady is a collector of things that are invisible, believe it or not. If you'll whisper your secret to me, Miss Christensen, we'll let the audience know what it is. Uh-huh. Interesting. I'm tempted to ask you if you're here on business or pleasure this evening, but I won't bother about that at the moment. Her secret concerns the something invisible that she collects. We'll start the questioning with Henry. Do you... Uh, I'm, is, your name's Carla? Yes. Do you invite people to your home to see this collection? <laughs> yes. Was That's Mr. confusing, uh, isn't it, when it's invisible? There's a sense in which something about the collection can be viewed, but... Uh, but... Hey. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Listen, uh... Miss Carla, when you collect these things, do you, do you see them first? <laughs> yes. Right. There is, there's a sense in which they are seen and a sense in which they are not seen. You know, I I'm doing much them. nicer with her than with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you, Henry. No. Sorry. <laughs> are these things, um, is it the kind of collection which you can someday say, now I've done it, I have a whole group of it? Uh, no, it'll keep going. For, forever. <laughs> You will eventually understand when you were a much older man. <laughs> uh, Anita? Are the things visible through a microscope? No. What, you have to use some kind of an instrument to see them at all? No, the seeing is kind of irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> oh, it is, huh? As often is the case with invisible then, objects. Then, but there is a way you know when you got one, right? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way, right? So, uh, 
<laughs> is it bigger than a bread box? <laughs> if it's invisible, you won't know. You won't know. You just sort of go like this, and there you have it, right? No, no you don't you know. You never could tell. Richard Dawson, please, help us out. Carla, how do you know when you've got enough of these things? <laughs> I won't. I won't have enough of them. Keep, do you keep collect them. old Claude Rains? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you're too young, but he played the Invisible Man, and I thought you might collect That's him. That's why I laughed and she didn't. I, <laughs> that's why I explained it to her and not to you. <laughs> My love, is this something that I could collect? Yes. Would it be something I could find in my home? Yes. Well, don't brush him on me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I rest my case. Ah, uh, Cheryl. And Carla, you use the word perceive. Does this collection have to do with anything in the in the spiritualistic world? Are you a collector of poltergeists? No. Uh, do you do any medium work at all? No. Uh, the things that you see that are invisible, other people can see them? Perceive them, yes. Perceive them, but not see them. Yes, there are various ways to sense things without the use of the eyeball. Uh, is it something you feel? Name is it something you feel? No. Uh, is it something uh, you smell? Yes. Do you collect smells? Yes. yes. <laughs> Oh, that's marvelous. That's great. That's marvelous. She is literally in the... She's known as the queen of stench. <laughs> She's in the smelling business. In the... They're called aromas. Aromas. Right. Right. Well, uh, well, uh, now, how do you collect a smell, if we could be very basic, if I'm not being too nosy? <laughs> um, most of them are steam distilled from the plant, from strawberries or magnolias. Steam distilled. Okay. Steam distilled. That means we heat them up with high pressure, and the oil, which is what I collect, evaporates out. Do you do and anything they... else in your cell, Carla? Do I do anything? <laughs> we have some samples, I understand, here of some of the more exotic fragrances, and if Johnny Olson brings them out, we'll uh, share them with the panel. Oh, I what can't are... see them now. Uh, would you tell us first, what are some of the uh, more unusual fragrances you might have? Oh, frankincense and myrrh. Are they back together oh. again? <laughs> <laughs> And what else? Oh, there's something called mugwort that smells really bad. You collect a deliberately bad smell? <laughs> yes, it's Why? interesting. What was yeah. it called again? Mugwort. mugwort. It's otherwise known as wormwood. Mm -hmm. Oh, it like goes with gall. Wormwood. Yeah. wormwood and gall. Do you sell these things commercially, Carly? Yes. The Listen, we're a little bit late. Uh, panel, would you grab a, uh, take a shot there? And it's not identified. We just want you to go, a little snifferoo and then pass it over to Anita, Richard. Yeah. Do it from six inches below. Yeah, not too close. Oh, six it's inches? Oh, yeah. Let it drift up. <laughs> just blow that out. What do you uh, think that you... Uh, no, uh, Henry will give you another one in just a moment. Oh. What do you think you right. smell? That's a past tense yeah. of smell. A spearmint. Spearmint? spearmint? What do you think it is, Anita? Some kind of peppermint or spearmint. Mm -hmm. What is it? Spearmint. Right. Spearmint. <laughs> Always stick in my nose and so on. <laughs> Henry, what do you think that is? And after you determine... It's a jar. That's all I know so <laughs> What do you think it is, Henry? And Pat, you take a whiff of it. Well, Henry's turning blue. I don't know the right. <laughs> Henry's always turning blue. What do you think, Henry? I'd love it on the rocks. <laughs> it's a great oh, uh, aroma, but I just can't uh, pin it down. What is it? Strawberry. Strawberry. That is strawberry. strawberry. Can we have a whiff? Oh. oh yeah. Well, I think tonight may have been the start of smell vision if we are looking for any kind of a new medium, and I can see nobody's that interested. But thank you very much, Miss Christensen, and we will keep smelling for you. Thank you very much. We'll be back with our guest star, Michael Landon, right after these messages. Prize, P-R-I-Z-E. Yeah, just as I suspected. It's another case of lingo. You know, I haven't seen an epidemic this bad since ah, ah. Bob Eubanks' evil twin released the whoopee virus in 72. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to call in a specialist. This could get hairy. Harry, H-A-I-R-Y? Lingo, the new word game hosted by Chuck Woolery. It's contagious. Weeknights at 7.30 only on Game Show Network. Hello, hello, H-E-L-L. Every Tuesday night, hang out with the squares, Hollywood squares. Now, Tuesday is more than just a word that ends in Y. Join Peter Marshall as he hosts Squares Tuesday, Tuesday night from 8 to 10 Eastern, only on Game Show Network. Let's welcome tonight's guest star for one of the most popular shows in television history, Bonanza. Here is Michael Landon.
Welcome to I've Got a Secret, Michael. As you can see, we've sent the panel away. Their little desks are empty over there. Mm -hmm. They're off in the soundproof room, which makes it possible for you to explain your secret to everybody, which I understand involves your interest in, in television directing, huh? Yes, I've directed a lot of film shows, but I've never directed a live show. So tonight I'm going to direct your show. Wonderful. Now, could we give the audience a little demonstration uh, before the panel comes in so we'll know what direction it means in this sense? Yeah, camera two is shooting us right now. Mm -hmm. Or I can say camera two, zoom in mm -hmm. to Steve for a close-up. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the last time I say that, Steve. <laughs> and now you can pan over to me. Uh -huh. uh, then I can say camera one, get a shot of the audience. Uh-huh. There they are. And if the audience wants to be on, they'll applaud every time they see themselves. <laughs> You're on, are you? <laughs> All right. If I want a wide shot of the panel, I can say camera three. Mm -hmm. And we've got the panel. There's the panel, all right. Well, now, uh, how will you keep the panel, when they do come back, from hearing what you're doing? It's very secretive, Steve. You know, okay. I have a hotline here. I'm going to uh, talk very quietly into this telephone. I see. So the panel can't hear what I'm saying. I'm going to keep it very muffled like this. Hold on with the phone is a direct line to the technical director and to the four cameramen. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to hear what I'm saying, but the panel won't know. They'll just notice you're mumbling, and they wonder what you're mumbling The about. audience at home will be able to hear. Good. Okay. Well, uh, so your secret is then that you will actually be directing our show, controlling all the cameras while the panel is asking you questions. In that case... An, an extra check, too, I understand. <laughs> yes. And I think on that note, Johnny, we can let the panel out of their uh, soundproof room because there's no air in there either, ladies and gentlemen, and they get panicky after a minute. <laughs> Michael, besides uh, being an actor, as everyone knows, and, and also a director, I think your fans would be interested to know you've been doing quite a bit of writing lately. Yes, I've gotten off of that, though. I've been collecting uh, something I've always wanted to collect, ranch smells. Been, uh... Excuse me, Steve and Michael, but the panel is on its way in. Well, we don't really care. We're having too many laughs out here. Thank you, Jack. No, come on in, panel. Make yourselves comfortable. You all know Michael Landon, of course. You know the gang. Michael's secret uh, concerns something that he will be doing uh, tonight. Uh, with this telephone he has in his hand is obviously involved with his secret. And it'll happen while you are questioning him. We'll start those questions with Pat Carroll. Michael, are you calling a personal friend? Pardon, madam? Are, are you calling a personal friend? Uh, it's getting that way. <laughs> uh, are you, uh, are you... You should get a no, though, so you'll know it. All right. No, are you calling a, no. a foreign country because you were just speaking partial French? No. It's from living on the ranch uh, a great length of time. It's difficult <laughs> to say Is this business? Take two. Is it business? I think it is. I'm, I'm, I'm being paid. Uh, yes, there's a business connection. Yeah. Uh, is it uh, some kind of lottery call or something that you can put in a new uh, phone in your bet thing? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, are, are you still alive? Gee, guys. <laughs> No, Pa doesn't let me gamble, dear. It's not a lottery call. No. Henry Morgan, see if you can make any sense of this. That's amazing because I, I've been alive for years and never got any applause for it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not living right, Henry. <laughs> it, it won't happen to you. Is this, are we interested in some of the mechanical aspects of this call? You could um, say so. I think you probably might mm -hmm. let, let me make a, a large, for instance, uh, you know, does it go to a satellite and then somewhere else, anything like that? Is it, is it a local call? <laughs> is that because he's breathing? <laughs> no, it's not a local call. In that sense. There's another sense in which it is a local call. Yes, nonsense. <laughs> now cut that out. Okay, Anita. You're trying to get your answering service, right? <laughs> uh, no, I'm no. not. No. The audience has, is participating in this, is that correct? In a loose sense. Yeah. Is it every time you, is, we mention a word? <laughs> no. It, it, it has nothing to do with something we're saying or that they start applauding. Is it something you're doing that they start applauding? Is it a time elapse? Is it like every every second or every? I mean, well, I don't, you haven't given me it. You might have been right during this period. <laughs> <laughs> He'll now answer the last fourteen oh, questions. Well. <laughs> Richard, see if you can tidy all this up. Is the call for me, Michael? <laughs> 
No, it is not, Richard. Are you Sorry. talking to anyone at the other end of the phone? Mm-hmm. Is it your agent? No, it's not my agent. Is it... Okay. Are we trying to guess to whom he's calling or what's happening while he's calling? Both. Okay. If you knew to whom he was speaking, you would have the secret. Oh, well, I don't wish to be that nosy, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, let me... Is it... Are you making an obscene phone call? <laughs> No, no, no. Yes, yes, you're right. Steve, Steve. It's my dime. Yes, Pat. Carol, is she he, thinks she has an is, idea. Is he talking to the producer? Well, yes. He's actually talking to the whole crew in the control room. He's been directing the show for the last few oh. minutes. Take one. Take one. <laughs> and the reason... The reason the audience applauded is every time Michael said take one, he was taking a picture of them and they were thrilled to death to be on camera. That was all. But I never saw thing. Michael talking. Well, he's very close mouthed. <laughs> yeah. No, he was going like that, so you wouldn't hear him. See, if you'd say, heard him say take two, you would have known what he was doing. Oh, you're, You're very sneaky, Michael. I know that. That's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, have you ever uh, done, you, you said you'd never done this kind of thing before with uh, the tape cameras and the, the live cameras, but I think you're very good at it. You have a quick mind. I think you ought to uh, stick with that. Well, I, I'm going to be with you tomorrow. Uh, that's the word around the studio so far. Okay. Only kidding, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Landon, thank you so much good for joining us. Okay, terrific. Speak, guess, argot, slang, lingo. Lingo. Redefining words, daddy -o. Shuffle that deck, because Jim Perry is ready to deal out some cash on card sharks. And when that's done, get ready for win, lose, or draw, followed by Family Feud. Have breakfast with the stars again tomorrow morning, starting at 9 Eastern on Game Show Network. I came over here to say goodnight to the panel because we're out of time. I thought you might be interested to see what our little friends do in the way of doodles. Can we have a uh, close shot of that? <laughs> I That's always. Richard Dawson, Dawson draws a, a flower a like flower that. For Anita. And Anita start. does something very similar. Oh, he did no, that. He, did that he does her doodling for her. It's a scandal, folks. <laughs> well, she's very wealthy. There's a column item, Earl Wilson. Very wealthy. And Henry Morgan, thoughtful, methodical, scientific brain that he is, does a kind of a modernistic uh, detail. You're a very sick man, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to see what's been on Pat's mind all through the season. <laughs> Pat, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Thank you very much, panel. See you next week. Thank you. Yeah. The double whammy. The sky is falling. Whammy, the all-new Press Your Luck. Tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on Game Show Network.